If you would stand with me, turn to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, starting in verse 6. I also want to just um, recognize and appreciate um, Pastor Taggart's office. The women, the women in the office and he himself to put up with me coming around a lot. They are really a patient group of people. And uh, just thank you, Mary and Debbie and Tootie, and uh, thank you. That doesn't that mean I want something tomorrow. I'm just <laughs> saying thank you. No, they do a great job, hard workers and really uh, diligent, and it's great. It's a great department. Isaiah 55, verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And this is an amazing portion of Scripture here. All the Scripture is amazing. I was thinking about this today. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Oh, God help me. Think your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. Don't you love this verse? It shall not return void. Wow, anything you've ever ministered to anybody, it shall not return void. But it will accomplish what I please or what God pleases. What God pleases. God pleases. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Father, thank you. Pray that you bless our time tonight. Thank you once again for Pastor Schaller and his leadership in the ministry here. Just pray that you'd cover his family and bless him in his travels to Finland. It's amazing to think 40 years, going on 40 years next year. And it's incredible the history, the mystery of the history and the history of the mystery. Thank you, God. This time in Budapest, Hungary, and just all the work in Eastern Europe and Central Asia and people that were participating in that conference time there. Just bless him special with thoughts that are your thoughts. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it was a great message we heard this morning and it's very clear as you connect it with this portion of scripture that Joseph had thoughts that were very high thoughts. His thoughts were not thoughts of revenge. He didn't have emotional thoughts. He did not have thoughts with any kind of attitude or anger towards God. Have you ever been upset with God? Come on. Like, why? Uh, and we might not say it, but it's very interesting. And his thoughts, and because of his thoughts, I mean, he knew that God was with him, even though sold into uh, the hands of the Ishmaelites and brought down into Egypt, and unfairly accused of having an affair with uh, Potiphar's wife, then going to prison for a number of years, then not being able to trust anybody there and just believing God and knowing that, I, I think it says five times in Genesis 30, uh, 9, 40, and 41, and God was with Joseph. Isn't that awesome? That God was with Joseph. And with him, not just in his presence, I believe, but with him as he would think with God, that he would have God's thoughts about what was taking place. I can't imagine what it would be like to be 17 years old, away from your family, which you were very intimate with, 
and they were very important to you and the father that raised you and who said in Genesis 37, 1 through 3, that he loved Joseph more than all of his others. Uh, and it doesn't mean that he was partial towards Joseph in a, in a strange way, but he made him a coat of many colors because he saw uh, that Joseph had potential to lead. And that coat was really significant that he would be the priest of the family. And he would have a blessing. The priest would always have a blessing. Automatically came with the, the coat and the initiation of his father. And so I can imagine what he must have thought in the beginning when this started to happen. But yet he made adjustment in his mind to God's thoughts. I think this is very important for us as Christians. That maybe we will think certain things as they take place or situations or circumstances take place. But then we say, okay, God, all right, I know what I'm thinking, but what are you thinking? I love Jeremiah chapter 29, 10 through 12. I know the thoughts I think towards you. By the way, do we know the thoughts that God thinks towards us? Pastor Adam said something awesome this morning about Colossians 2.10. And you are complete in him. And do I know the thoughts that God thinks towards us? me towards us that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us hope in the outcome or it says an expected end do i know the thoughts that god thinks towards me and i think we have so many people that have suffered so much pain and hurt and damage even as believers you know for sure unbelievers but as believers because they just do not know how god thinks they somehow get an idea that God thinks a particular denominational way or orthodox way or certain church way or a way that they've been exposed to their whole life and they really do not know and understand how God thinks. And really this is the most important thing for us. That's why the Bible is important to read the Bible. That's why a, a, a pulpit is important. Bible school is important. Devotionals are important. Listening to people, uh, even on the radio, that have sound doctrine. It's important because I am going to think with God. And if I'm thinking with God, then I'll make decisions based upon how God thinks. And he says that his thoughts are higher. So when Joseph faces his brothers, he said, you meant it for evil, and I'm going to give you evil back. He didn't say that. But God meant it for good to deliver many people alive. And that's incredible. When I look at situations, do I believe Romans 8.28? All things work together for good to them who, are, who love God and are called according to his purpose. Do I really believe that? Oh, I, I have myself quoted it at times, talked about it at times, but I wonder if it's sinking down. And rather than acting emotionally or erratically in my mind and causing that to uh, send me in a direction of certain decisions, I want to think with God. Because God's thoughts are what? They're higher than our thoughts. They're higher than our thoughts. I look through the Bible, and I, even if you look at your own personal life, there's a lot of things you would have never, ever planned or suggested to God or even have ever wanted to happen that have brought you to this place. I don't mean this place geographically, but where we are in our Christian life. And there was all kinds of things that would take place as God would minister and God's thoughts would lovingly overrule my thoughts and that his thoughts would produce his ways in my life. And it's incredible when you think about that. I remember I, I really had a lot of anxiety over being involved with the Christian school at one time. Hi, Pastor Barry. And I know that's not you. You're a very peaceful man of God. And, I, and just remember, there's a peace that is higher than understanding. It passes understanding. We heard it said, right? And I thought about this, that, and thank God for the plunkets or Mr. and Mrs. Plunkett, because if it wasn't for them, I'm not talking about uh, Pastor Mike Plunkett and Averill, and I think Jerry's here tonight. Thank you for coming. Hi. And I, it's amazing to me. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And I would have never chosen to do that. It seems like I remember one day there was a staff meeting, and they went around the table, and they were talking about the need for somebody to lead in the Christian school. And six people said no, and I was the last one. And they're all looking at me, and I went, hmm. 
what does this mean? Nothing. I said, okay, okay, all right, I'll give this a shot. And uh, I, really, I really enjoyed it, even though, it, um, though he slay me, I will trust him. Didn't, didn't you like that verse this morning? Though he slay me. All the way home I was saying to God, you have permission to slay me, permission to slay me, permission to slay me, permission to slay me. Oh yeah, I, I, I want to say that. Go ahead, go right ahead. I don't mean like, you know, knock me off planet Earth. I'm just saying like God, you have permission to show me thoughts that are not your thoughts because I don't want to walk in the ways that are not your ways. And this is incredible. They are higher. They're beyond. This is what we were talking about in the rap yesterday. And I met somebody yesterday who really struck me. This, this man really touched my heart. He said, I always, I always listen to Grace Hour, he said. I listen to Grace Hour all the time. I hear you, Pastor Schaller, Pastor Love, and different people on Grace Hour. He said, can I tell you a little story? He said, I want to thank you as a church, not me personally, but as a church, for reaching out to people in the city and in this area in Baltimore. He said, you don't realize, he said, I, I have two pieces of property here. He says, and whenever I see a problem taking place, like a situation where there's been a robbery or something's taking place, I come out with a bullhorn and start preaching Christ. And I'm looking at this guy saying, hello, who are you? Wow. And uh, he said, you know, and, and, and it's amazing what's taking place. He says, I want to tell you something. And this is from his own mouth, and I thought it was interesting. He said, I walked in a very evil way. When I, I was not saved, I was walking in an evil way. It was heroin addiction. It was crime. I went to prison. He said, and on and on it went. And he said, I had a son, an older son, and he followed my ways. He thought like I did because I initiated that life and he picked it up even though he has a volitional choice to make. He picked it up and he walked in that way and he was murdered. He said, and he was standing next to a, another young man, he said, but since I met Christ, and this has been a number of years, I'm walking with God and that's how he's walking. The other son. He said, would you pray for us? And I thought that was amazing. And what he was saying was, I'm thinking differently. And you know, as you go into these school systems, as we have people going in during the school year and speaking to people, and we have people interested in, in foster care and orphans and whatever is going on, what we are doing is just simply giving people another way of thinking. Isn't that all it is? I cannot determine their decisions. I cannot tell them. I can tell them how to think, show them how God thinks, and whatever decisions they make are decisions that make because we have to honor people's right to make choices. Are you with me? By the way, there's a lot of churches that would just like to manipulate people into activity. And then they do manipulate people into activity. And then the activity that takes place has nothing to do with God because they've been manipulated into it. And they easily walk away from it. And they quit doing it and they get exhausted in it. And they say, this is not for me. God's things are not for me. And because basically they have been controlled to make those decisions. And it might even be the right thing to do, but they have not received it from God himself and they have not made a decision. So God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So I will go down into Egypt and no matter what goes on, I'm going to trust God. And can you imagine he gets elevated? He gets elevated to right under Pharaoh. Isn't that amazing? A 17-year-old boy in God's plan, it was not his thoughts. These are the thoughts of God. And how remarkable that is. That just thinking, what thinking with God can do to deliver me? Hello? To deliver me. In other words, my, the problem with people is, is and, my, and my problem and your problem and all of our problems and people out in the world is just a thinking problem. It's very much a thinking problem. That's why Paul would speak to the Philippians at least seven times about the word phroneo, which is know and learn how to think with God. Learn how to think with God. So as we go into the city or we are speaking to people at our jobs, wherever we may be, on the mission field, in a Christian school, uh, in our home, in our neighborhoods, we are saying and we are, we are initiating to people a, a new way of thinking. And that's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 21 through 23, and Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. 
where it says that set our affections. That's not the word. The word affections is an interesting word, but it's mindset. Set your mind on things above. For you are dead, slay me, Lord, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And I, and I think it's amazing. And, and so God's thinking beyond my thinking. And when God's thinking is beyond my thinking and I'm receiving it, then his ways become my ways. It's an automatic. It doesn't even make it difficult. I have to just think correctly and think with God. They used to have those people that would walk around or have those things that said, what would Jesus do? You know, I never understood those stickers, those on cars. You know, what would Jesus do? You know, no, what would Jesus think? How does Jesus think? So thinking with God. And when Peter tried to prevent Christ from going to the cross, what happened? What happened with him? He said, get behind me, Satan. By the way, the Greek language is interesting. He actually spun Jesus around and rebuked him. Be this thought, be far from you. That's how he said it. And Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. For you savor, the word is thinking. It's an interesting word that they use in the Bible. But it's phroneo. You don't think with God, you think with men. And because you think with men, you are trying to prevent me from going to the cross, which is your salvation, which is what the eternal purpose of dying for the sins of the world. But my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You're thinking about a political Messiah that will bring something in so that you can have some kind of a power position in Israel as one of the people that you might think would sit on a throne or something. And I'm talking about dying for the sins of the world and salvation and redemption and propitiation and reconciliation. And you're trying to prevent me from going because you're not thinking correctly. And Peter, thank God for the call of God on his life. And Peter began to learn how to think with God. Learn how to think with God. How about this statement? Though all these deny you, not me. <laughs> You'll be running the fastest. You'll be running the fastest out of there. Everybody, oh, I, they, they may, not me. I'll go to prison with you and I'll die with you. Yeah. Sure. Peter wasn't thinking with God. He had no idea what was going to face him with opposition from the enemy. So I want to think above. You know, sometimes we get into situations in our lives and we think. We, we don't, it's not like bad thinking, but it's not God's thinking. It's good, but it's not God. Have you ever had that happen to you? I've thought a lot of good things that weren't God. This is a good thing to do. This is a good thing to do. Is it a God thing to do? Is it a God thing to do? What do you mean you're going away? He rose from the dead. You're going to leave us? Bye. I'm going. Wait a minute. What's going on? If I don't, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit doesn't come. <laughs> they weren't thinking correctly. So God's thoughts above our thoughts. And that's where a lot of times you can see in the scriptures people living in human reason. They're at the seashore. And Jesus is standing there and he says, uh, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. They're like, what? We've been fishing all what? All night and we caught zero. Zero. In other words, as we have evaluated the situation by sight and based upon our ability as fishermen on the Sea of Galilee to determine when you can catch fish, how you can catch fish, and if you should catch fish, you don't know what you're talking about. But then all of a sudden there was a word, nevertheless. Nevertheless, at your what? At your word, I'm going to let down the net. In other words, do I live responding to the word or do I have human reason? God's word is far above human reason. And we can be very reasonable people. Very reasonable people. It's reasonable. Somebody said to me, it's not reasonable. Why do you cut your grass so low? Because I want to. It's going to burn good. Good, it'll be less to cut. It's going to burn. It's not reasonable to do that. It's not reasonable to cut grass when it's 98 going on 104. Yes, it is. It's very reasonable. It's very reasonable. Okay? Somebody said to me, you know, at your, at your particular age, you should be having people come and do it. 
I said, at your particular age, you ought to learn how to think. <laughs> but you know that like all of us with Italian genetical descent love gardening, love lawns, love flowers, love all that. I mean, we just do. I don't know what it is. You know, I just, I just do. I'm not like Pastor Adam Speedy who came to my house one time and it was weed whacking a rock garden. I said, no, rocks don't need to be like weed whacked. And then he really, he learned something and now I think he'll even be hired someday as a professional <laughs> weed whacker. But the word, the word goes beyond, beyond human reason. And it's so easy in this system because we're surrounded by Mr. and Mrs. Reason everywhere we look. Mr. Reason's at work. Mr. Reason is in Hopkins. Mr. Reason is across the street. Mr. Reason lives in me. Huh? Reasonable. This is reasonable. Is it reasonable that you should stop being the world's greatest cricket player and have a $200,000 fortune in 1910? Is it reasonable that you should give all the money away and go to China, CT stud? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And it's ridiculous with human reason to think that you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So human reason, the word of God goes beyond what? Human reason. The other day I went running. Now, I haven't run in about a year and a half. Uh-huh. With my granddaughter, I did 1155 yards slower sprints. But I have a goal. It's not reasonable. It's actually stupid. <laughs> Probably very stupid. But you know what? I see that gym down there was made for me too. <laughs> and I, before you know it, anyway. How about this? Is faith beyond sight? Uh, every, uh, we walk by what? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. And there's a lot of things we see but we don't walk by faith. Faith is beyond sight. It's incredible. Beyond sight. Oh, what you see, what you see. Don't you see that? No, it's not that important what I see. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. How about God's faithfulness beyond unbelief? Isn't that amazing? God's faithfulness takes us way beyond. Unbelief is everywhere. It's an atmospheric thing. We have an atmosphere of unbelief because Satan doesn't believe. And he creates an atmosphere in the world system of unbelief and God is faithful. I was thinking about that 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, where it says, when we, when we are faithless, he what? He abides what? I don't believe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't believe. It doesn't matter. When you are faithless, he abides what? He lives in what? Faithfulness. He cannot deny himself. This is who he is. He's faithful. Can my unfaithfulness change the faithfulness of God? Impossible. So God's faithfulness is beyond this unbelief. We said before, peace is beyond and passes understanding. Hope passes discouragement. I think it's amazing. Hope goes way beyond discouragement. The eternal is beyond the temporal. I don't want to live in temporal thinking. What are we going to do? What's going on here? This church has always been a church that thinks in the eternal, and the eternal is way above that which is temporal. For that which is temporal is passing away, but that which is eternal is here forever. You know what else? Grace is beyond self. Grace is the person of Christ. Grace is beyond self. I could never do that. God already knows that. That's why he's giving you grace. It's as simple as that. Finished work is beyond works. It's amazing. The finished work is beyond works. It's above works. It's higher. It's higher than works. It's amazing. It's incredible to think about this. And we li do we live in the beyond and that which is higher, or do I live my life sourced in what I seem to see happening in this world system? It's incredible. Pastor Stevens, long ago, he knew that he took a step from Maine and out and saying, we're going to have a vision to go into all the world. And he saw something with six or seven people 
that other people didn't see. And he started to live in that which is beyond. And I think it's incredible because he had Zoe life. Zoe life is beyond biological life. Way beyond biological life. I was thinking even in John chapter 1, the God-man is way beyond man. God said he'll become a man. And think about, the, think about the, the gospel of John. You think about this, this apostle, this man who was a fisherman who really wasn't that intelligent. And as you, read, as you read his gospel as inspired by the Holy Spirit, God says, I'm going to take you beyond. I'm going to change this water into fruit juice for the wedding. I'm going to take you beyond religion, Nicodemus, into being born again. I'm going to take you beyond the woman at the well, Samaritan, despised by Jews, and on her fifth husband. I'm going to take you beyond that and make you an evangelist that will bring a whole city to Christ. Are you with me? I'm going to take you beyond man who's had an infirmity for 38 years. You just want to try to uh, see something happen. I'm going to take you beyond, and I'm going to heal you. We're going beyond this 38-year infirmity. I'm going to take you beyond five loaves and two fishes, and I'm going to feed everybody, thousands of people, because we are people that live in the beyond. We're going to go beyond a religious ceremony of the Feast of Tabernacles, and I'm going to talk about living water flowing out of my very being. That's taking you beyond. We're going beyond adultery and people that want to stone you based on Moses' law, and I'm going to give you mercy in John chapter 8. I got loud because a couple people are wait, mentally wavering right now. John chapter 9 is the light of God takes that blind man and brings him to a place where he can see. He didn't even, by the way, isn't it amazing for all those so-called faith healers? He didn't even know who healed him. You know, people proclaiming, I prayed this guy got healed. Really? That's nothing. I'm not saying anything wrong, but like this, who he, I, he said, I don't know. I just know I was blind and now I see. And they went to his parents and they said to his parents, like, hey, he is of age, ask him. He's old enough, he should be able to answer you. John, John chapter 10, I'm going to bring you into a place of, of I'm going to be your shepherd and no man can pluck you out of my hand. We're going beyond death and into life. I'm going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Beyond the king being crowned with a great celebration, I'm going to have a humble king who comes in riding on a, a, a colt. Isn't that, it's amazing. And so you see throughout the Bible, God saying, listen, my thoughts are different than your thoughts. And when my thoughts are different than your thoughts, and you begin to live in my thoughts, before you know it, my ways will be your ways. And don't we want to live in the ways of God, the plan of God, the life of God? Moses, kill an Egyptian, because you have some idea, somehow, through some illumination, that you're the deliverer. And you're going to make it happen in the flesh by killing an Egyptian and digging a hole and hiding him in the sand. No, that's not the way. I need to take you for just a couple of years, a little vacation, to the backside of the desert for 40 years. Okay? And by the time you and I are done fellowshipping, and you'll be stuttering and going, oh, God, help me. And I'll bring you to a burning bush and then I'm going to send you back and you are going to just take the greatest nation on the planet and with my ways, you're going to level them. And then you're going to bring them out with a high hand, an outstretched arm and a high hand, the holy hand of God. And this is going beyond Moses. I'm going to take you beyond Pharaoh and the riches of Egypt and I'm going to take you out because I want you to think with me. And when I find myself not thinking with God, I am now living in ways that have nothing to do with the ways of God at all. And so many people are always trying to correct people's ways. We got to have this, you got to stop doing this and start doing this and don't do this and don't do that, you know, and uh, whatever. And they're always dealing with ways, but not with people's thinking, not with how people are thinking. Can you imagine I, I, having worked for 10 years in prisons and having... Uh, 
different Christian programs for people that had drug and alcohol problems. I was faced with so many different organizations, and, and I'm not saying God can't use them, but they never did it God's way. And so people would do well for a while and then go right back to it because they hadn't changed their what? Thinking. And then if the thinking is changed because they're getting God's thinking, receiving how God thinks in Dundalk, right, Pastor Jeff? They receive how God thinks, then the ways are a result of how God thinks. And so I don't have to be walking around always correcting everybody's ways. Ways I need to think with God. Think about how little I knew. Uh, we were talking today at, at a birthday party, and uh, we were talking about a message about how Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, you are my friends. See, that's higher, isn't it? The, you know what? Serving God is awesome, and the Bible speaks about it, but you are no longer servants. You are my friends. That, that God's thinking about those men as his what? As his friends. And we are just going through how important this is with friendship, that people have a friendship with God, still honor him, still exalt him, still see him as omnipotent, omnipresent, uh, omniscient, and, 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 and glorify him, but he's my friend. And my friend wants me to know how he what? How he thinks. What do you think? What does God think about missions, about lost people? Mm -mm. Hello? Hello? What does he think? He came to do what? Seek and save that which is what? That which is lost. How does God, what does God think about? It? And I, I never have a problem. I think if people are always trying to address why people don't care about lost souls, I think we go with not the ways, but the what? The thinking. If I can think with God about lost people, if I can think with God. How about thinking with God about prayers being answered? Do I think with God that I can say a prayer and somebody can be transformed? That God hears my prayers call upon me and I what? I will answer. So this is what God thinks about prayer. Sometimes I'm praying and even myself, I'll go, God, does this make any sense? Are you even listening to me? Am I making any sense at all? Is this, am I praying in vain? Or, and, and then I, I get corrected by the Holy Spirit. Like, just think with God and pray. Be, be led by God and pray. And then the prayer and the way of thinking becomes God's ways. And then I see prayer as being very important. I find times of getting up at night, I think that they're intrusions into my sleep. And thus God says, these are not intrusions, these are initiations. That's an intrusion, initiation. That's an intrusion. How dare you have me up at this time of night? And God will say, uh, my thoughts are not your what? Thoughts, my ways are not your ways. I, I told you the story about how a guy tore off the front end of our Enterprise, rent the van. Just ripped the whole front end right off. And I, I t we talked to him. Pastor Manny ministered to him. You know, he came to church in Tennessee. He was in the church in Tennessee, and he only lives like a half a mile from the church. And everybody greeted them, and I hugged him. I said, thank you for what you did. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. There may, there may have been an easier way. <laughs> but this is the way it happened. And he was kind of a little bit reserved, wondering, like, and he saw me, like, I hope he's not mad. And I just hugged him. I said, this is awesome. God ordained this whole thing. And who cares about a hunk of metal? Huh? Metal. Plastic. Sorry. Sorry, I went like, I, my thoughts are not correct. They're all made with plastic unless you get something about 25 to 30 years old. Those are the ones you like. My car hit a tree once, and they took the tree away. <laughs> a huge tree. Car hit the tree, cut into the tree, and they cut the tree down. Car kept running. My thoughts are what? Not your thoughts. And so when we come to decisions in our lives, I want to think with you, God. I want to think the way Joseph was thinking. I want to think with God. My thoughts are not your thoughts. I'm going to make you somebody in the line of Christ. Ruth and Rahab. Ruth and Rahab, a Moabitess and a Canaanite harlot, because my thought, and when you start to think with me, it's going to change your behavior. Isn't that what happened when a, when a woman comes in and starts anointing the feet of Jesus? 
I, I guarantee she heard him speak and it changed her what? It changed her thinking and the change of thinking came forth with a, with a change of ways, of, of living, a change of living. And this is why it says to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind so that you will know what is the good, acceptable, and the, and the will of God, the holy will of God, the perfect will of God. He's saying, my mind gets, needs to be renewed. And when I'm thinking with God, you're in a classroom with students, right? I'm looking right at you. Hi, aren't you ready for school this year? You have an opportunity to change people's thinking, right? They may come in with all kinds of strange ways of thinking. Uh, I used to teach school in a prison. Can you imagine what people thought? Huh? I'll kill you with this sharpened pencil. I'm going to change your thinking so you become a great math student, a great writer, and a great printer. And that's what's going to happen. Why? Because we're going to initiate to people God's thoughts even when they don't want them. Because if God's thinking through me and then his ways come forth through me, his ways make people think another way. And this is key. Let's be a people simply tonight that just keep thinking with God, receiving thinking from God. And watch the ways change. Watch a husband love his wife like never before. I told them today at the, uh, at the birthday party, I, my wife, I love my wife and she is my best friend. I'm thinking with God. Thinking with God. And a, and a wife loving her husband. Changing thinking. Don't try to change your ways. Change the thinking, receive God's thinking, and watch how the thinking produces activity in the mind. As we heard, some people are living in the outer court, some in the holy place, but God wants to bring us into the what? The most holy place, where we are not living in the body or in the soul, but we are living in the spirit. We have fellowship and communion with the spirit of God. And now the spirit of God is controlling my thinking, my affections, the choices of my will, my conscience, and my self-image. And so we're thinking with God. And that's why we've got the Bible. That's why we've got church. That's why we have an opportunity to see God change the ways of a people group, change the ways uh, in my family, in my marriage in our lives, wherever we may be, because we're thinking with God, and that's producing the ways of God. Amen? Father, thank you tonight. Thank you. For light is way beyond darkness. Truth is way beyond the lie. Humility is way beyond pride. Meekness is way beyond reaction. Thinking with God. The good news is way beyond the news. There's a lot of news out there, what about the good news? It's higher, and it produces ways. So we pray tonight. Your purpose is beyond my plan. Thank you for that. Thank you. Higher. And it will accomplish what God pleases, and it will prosper where he sends it. It's not what I please, or not my prosperity, but it's all God. His thoughts, his ways, his pleasure, his prosperity. We thank you tonight. We pray if you are here, you've never received Christ. Nicodemus was a religious man. You're on the internet watching. He was a religious man. But his ways were not the ways of God because he wasn't thinking with God. And Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be born again. So you can tonight receive Jesus Christ, letting Christ into my life. He doesn't change the old heart. He gives me a new one. The new man is higher than the old man, <laughs> way beyond. And the new man produces new ways of thinking, new activity. Thank you. If you are here, You've never received Christ as your Savior. Just simply say, Jesus, save me tonight. I believe in you and I receive you as my personal Savior. On the internet, Jesus, save me. Thank you for loving me. Your mercy is beyond my sin. 
Your love is beyond my fears and insecurities. Your grace is beyond my self-life. Your finished work of the cross is beyond my works. I cannot save myself. Save me, God. So if you're here in the assembly, put your hand up if you want Christ. On the internet, just say yes to God. We thank you tonight. Thank you for higher thoughts and higher ways. Coming down from God, from heaven. The most holy place. Not the outer court, not the holy place, but the most holy place. Not the body, not the soul, but the spirit controlling the new soul, the new man. Then my body becomes a living sacrifice. Father, thank you tonight. Bless our night. Once again, bless Pastor Scheller. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.